Hello and welcome to another Maple Story 2 video. Uh, I read the comments from the previous video and I do appreciate all the um, positive comments and questions and such. Um, a lot of you were asking about consumables. Can you make a consumable video? And yes, I'll be able to do that. Um, the most important thing I would like to comment about is when you check black market and if you don't have crafting yet and such it's gonna cost you quite a lot with these consumables so make sure that you do your life skills um, life skills is important because you can craft for yourself you can make money to sell to other raiders out there if they need some consumables but um, a big difference is the mage and the warrior tonics so and then it's the same thing with the whetstones and with the yarrow, uh, with the candles. So if you're playing a mage class or magical class, you are going to have some benefit from it because it costs a bit less. So let's give it a small preview. So on Special Warrior Tonic, well, it's dropped down in price right now. Uh, it's currently on 59 per, per tonic. Uh, it used to be up to 200 each. Uh, I started to sell mine at 100 each when this was, you know, booming out in the black market. I made quite a lot of messes through this. But if you check this, for example, it's 59k, right? And then we check the mage. The mage one is 50% less. It costs only 25k each. So if you're a mage class, it's gonna be cheaper for you. Uh, obviously, if you're trying to sell these, warrior tonics is more expensive because there's more class or people playing physical classes. Uh, so these are what I would recommend to you know have a look up on. Uh, if you're playing as a physical class, I would not recommend buying them unless you're rich. Uh, you can craft them for yourself because every time you craft, you're gonna be able to have 10 of these from one craft. Um, so another thing we're going to check up on candles and on whetstones. So on tin whetstones they are 29k each. Uh, that's quite a lot of uh, money for just a consumable for 10 minutes and it vanishes if you die. So this is something you don't want to pop unless you know you're 100% you're Gucci on not dying. Uh, but it does give you increased damage. It's only tin, so it's the lower version. The platinum is probably going to be higher. So the platinum whetstone is 58k. Uh, quite a lot of money. I would still recommend going for mining and obviously do the smithing to craft these two. Um, yeah. Not really worth the money if you want to spend on whetstones. I mean, it, the only difference between this and the uh, tin whetstone is 1%, pretty much. So, I would say play around, see which one you prefer having. Uh, obviously, you could sell your platinum and then you can keep yourself with the uh, tin. Uh, from what I experienced, uh, you're not going to get much of tin because you're a higher rank. So if you're higher rank, when uh, you are gonna be able to loot uh, only a few tin, uh, tin ingots and such, so it's gonna be harder for you to craft tin whetstones and platinum whetstones is a, a little bit easier. I think you can do, uh, let's see, I think you can do four of each, uh, like craft four platinum and four uh, tin whetstones every day. Uh, but um, these are quite expensive, 25, uh, 29k, 58k, and then let's look at candles. So lavender candle is the cheaper one, aka the tin version. Uh, it's 13.5k, pretty cheap, you know, uh, as a mage class. It's really, really cheap. And then I think the prices for Yarrow Candles, even though it's only 1% more, um, it's a little bit higher. I guess it's on a fair price right now in comparison to the other two uh, whetstones. So yeah, these two are the consumables that I would recommend using. Um, I'll showcase on my hotbar. Let's see, whetstone, Yarrow Candles, uh, the tonics. It's over here. And then we also have uh, Rooted Strength Lepentir. We will have Healing Aura, just in case for raiding uh, when your healer is not around. Shockwave is also important to have for that extra DPS. Um, 
I'm going to place Life Drain Lapentier on the side because I know that it's good for certain classes and not for everyone. Um, what else can we pick? I don't. I believe, yeah, Elixirus is important for raiding. Premium Dungeon Potions is really important as well. Um, the Star Adventure Potions is really, really good. We. That's a lot of <laughs> items that I got. Yeah. So these items is what I use. Uh, obviously, it really depends on um, which class you are going with. So for mages, it's the yellow uh, the candles and the mage tonics. For uh, physical classes, you go with uh, whetstones and the special warrior tonics. Uh, for consumable uh, healing items, elixir is good. You can get them either from cash shop for seven merits each, or you can get them from world bosses by just killing. Um, the world bosses and once they're dead you keep hitting them and they will drop elixirs so that's one way for you to get some extra healing premium dungeon if you're in the premium club you are going to get the potion that gives you 1.2k healing uh, for every five seconds and then sweet adventure potions which is only for those that are played during the maple hill event uh, you can pop this in combination with special white potion and you will get 2k healing just like that uh, another recommendation is you could craft some uh, healing items. It does heal you for a certain amount. I wouldn't say it's the best, but you know it's it's something if you haven't crafted it. And currently we do have to uh, turkey uh, for the Thanksgiving event. So if you don't want to waste uh, or if you don't have premium club, I would recommend um, using either the uh, white potions if you don't have any other options, but since you've been doing a lot of uh, events and such, Halloween uh, event, for example, you can get those pumpkin juices or roasted turkey as optional healing for the uh, raids currently. Um, another thing that people recommended was the flyers. I don't think I have them in my inventory, but uh, consumables such as, you know, these... Uh, Recovery items, sweet juice blend, or that high flyer uh, item that you can purchase in Lith Harbor. Uh, these are okayish, um, but it costs a lot. But they are okayish to heal up uh, every now and then, you know, just to have some uh, recovery or regen on yourself. Um, but I usually use these three items Elixirs, Premium Special White Potions, if not, it's the Turkey, and then Adventurer, uh, Adventurer Potions, just in case. Um, as for the slap and tears, uh, I know there's a lot of uh, items you can choose. I would go with Rooted Strength. Uh, rooted Strength gives you 30% damage, but it also reduces your movement speed. This is only going to be used whenever your uh, priest does a holy symbol on the floor, and you know it's safe to attack. Um, for example, when Seamok is... Uh, yeah, when Seamok is... Um, getting out of his red aura that's when he decides to use the um, the ball attack or the cannon attack you'll have enough time to have the rooted strength up to uh, dish out t for 10 seconds 30 percent more damage so i would say this is really good something you can neglect the movement speed is you use your dash attack your dash attacks or teleport attacks or in general teleport uh, is a way for you to travel around faster or to dodge attacks uh, so Rooted Strength is only good for those moments when you have a Holy Symbol. Otherwise, I would recommend spamming Shockwave because it's uh, on a less cooldown. Oh god, someone is messing up with the sound. Let's leave the channel. I do apologize for that. Uh, some people are jerks <laughs> uh, just spamming uh, with their instrument with that uh, high decibel or uh, whatever you should call it, frequency sound um but yeah shockwave every time you uh, don't need to use rooted strength because you are gonna be mobile uh cdev Dev, uh devrak is literally teleporting quite a lot he moves a lot or you have to for example uh, you get shadows on you so when you get shadows on you you don't want to be slowed down uh, shockwave is better at that point so rooted strength is very limited it costs a lot as well i'll showcase the shop uh, later on where you can get them i'm obviously standing next to them but uh, rooted strength is really good for that extra burst as well as when you're on the 
last phase for CMOC, uh, when, when it's poison, you can stand on top of the tubes and you'll just pop that root of strength to deal enough damage. If you're insecure about your health, I would not recommend using root of strength then. Uh, you can use healing aura to heal yourself because it's a uh, percentile healing for the group. It uh, helps out a lot if, if your priest is not available. Uh, in general, just want to heal yourself. Um, healing aura is really, really nice to have for those emergency um, shockwave, as I said earlier, is the filler for every 20 seconds, something you want to spam. Uh, Life Drain Lapenteer is something for the wizard or for the knight. Uh, the reason for that is when you play, uh, when you play in Chaos Devarak, you are going to be low on health. Priest sometimes can't be there for you because he, the priest is with the DPS on the boss. Uh, that means uh, you're probably going to need to pop either a life drain lapentier or healing aura for yourself to you know, recover yourself up. Uh, I would recommend life drain lapentier because it deals damage at the same time it does recover you more the more enemies it has. So I would say you have about 4 to 5 enemies, right? And that's 40 to 50% heal in comparison to healing aura which is only 30%. So life drain is really good for knight for example if you're doing C dev. Uh, for C mark, it depends. It really depends. But I would still recommend to just use Shockwave because it does more damage uh, in general. So where do you get these items? Uh, first off, with the crafting, um, you do want to pick up the tin because you need Mind Opal and Tin Ore when you do this. For the Whetstones, same thing with the Platinum. Um, you do want to get Platinum Ore so you can craft the uh, Platinum Whetstones. Um, I'm not sure if it will ask you to have amber. I'll have to check it right now. So if you check on the uh, tin whetstone, it'll ask you to mine opal and tin ingot to make some tin whetstones. And then for the uh, platinum whetstone, it will ask you for amber and platinum ingot. So what you do is you will gather uh, gold veen for the amber and you will gather platinum for the platinum ore. And that will benefit you a lot uh, saving yourself some money because it costs only 1.1k um, per item instead of you know purchasing one whetstone for let's say 30k or 50k so you do save yourself a lot of money um, for alchemy it would be the lavender candle over here uh, so you pick either lavender essence uh, and you get the lavender bloom dust along with it from the foraging so check over here, you see purple bloom dust, lavender, perfect. So that's really great for your lavender candles. Uh, as for the uh, yarrow candle, it's the yarrow essence and the blue bloom, uh, blue boom dust. Uh, so what you do over here is you're going to need the yarrow, but it only gives you yarrow as whetstone uh, platinum did. Uh, you're going to need to co uh, cover up with oregano. And uh, with that, you'll have enough materials to craft some yarrow candles. For consumable potions and such, uh, my recommendation would be, if you're selling, I would say special water tonic, uh, because these two um, share the same amount of uh, ingredients. So if you do want to sell something and earn money, I would recommend selling the warrior tonics. But if you are going for yourself, you know, you want some extra buffs or consumable items, craft the one for your class. Um, it's going to require you to get Bergamoth, uh, Bergamoth which is the rank 13, uh, Oregano, you're going to need some tea tree, lemon balm, and then you're going to need green bloom dust. Uh, everything is, you know, from foraging, so you don't have to worry too much about it. Uh, you do get to spend 26k for it. I know it's a lot, but you'd get 10 of these. So. If you divide it, it's uh, 2.6k for each one. And people are selling these for, what, 75k? Up to 100k each. So they are making profit out of it for selling each for 100k when these are, usually, uh, when these are actually just 2.6k each, if you think about the cra uh, crafting price. So you are making money out of it, um, but you also benefit a lot from crafting it yourself. Uh, another item I would recommend is the spirit boost. Uh, it's a decent way for you to dish out extra damage, uh, but it does take up on the offensive consumable. Uh, I did not craft this at all because I, I need to 
save my um, materials for something else. But it's just an extra thing if you want to have some extra spirit. Um, I did cover up because since you have consumables that are offensive, the either warrior or mage tonic, you can also have uh, defensive buffs. So the defensive one, I picked the special defense tonic. Uh, this is what I craft. You get two, um, so each one costs 5k to craft. Uh, I get some extra defense. It helps a lot sometimes uh, to not get one shot, for example. Uh, having that special defense tonic does help out from time to time. Really great to have. And for the last item I did not cover up is consume uh, for food items. Um, food items, you either want to go with the spicy noodle or ramen noodle, whatever, or crispy fried chicken. So you can craft these at rank 13. You get five of these, uh, but it costs 130k and a lot of materials. Since these cost green bloom dust as well, it's kind of hard for me to craft these um, because I do want to craft... Uh, potions for myself but if you're uh, willing to help out your raid you don't want to waste your rue uh, which is your daily currency and um, for spicy noodles and such you could just craft these for your raid group and you know benefit uh, make make take take some turns maybe uh, help each other out you know one uses crispy fried chicken for this run and then the next day someone else uses it, uh, their crispy fried chicken because you don't want to burn yourself out with the mesos and the materials that you're putting effort into in your raid group um, but yeah, you are gonna need pears, which is rank 13. You're gonna need cucumber, banana, pine mushrooms. So uh, it does cost a lot of materials, but it is it is worth it if you can get the clear if you think about it. And obviously, try to think for your party member as well. So this is the offensive food that you can get. Uh, you can also stack with the defensive one, which is the Elinian blueberry or Mega blueberry. So this one requires a lot of tomatoes. A lot of people have struggles with the tomatoes. Uh, obviously, try not to use uh, the tomatoes for chips. The same thing with the pears. Try not to use them for the chips because you are going to need them for the foods uh, to craft for the party. This one gives you defense for the whole party, 6%, which is a lot. If you stack that with the special uh, defense tonic, you get 9% uh, more defense. That's quite a lot. So this could save you from one, getting one shot uh, from the basic attacks. Uh, so it's, you know, optional. You don't have to craft this, but it's really optional. I would recommend it because it doesn't really require much of these materials. You won't be using any of these materials yourself unless you, you know, are spending it on, for example, the agaric mushroom kebab uh, for XP or if you need to use these healing items, for example. Um, these are also, you know, optional if you want to craft. But if you go with the raid uh, consumable, I would say a linen blueberry and the crispy fried chicken or spicy noodles uh, if you're not able to craft these. Um, as a personal buff that I did not show on my inventory, banana sandwiches. So banana sandwiches is really good. Uh, it gives you increased health by 250. It's a def uh, defensive cooking or defensive food item that stacks uh, since you are eating let's say you are eating uh, crispy fried chicken I think it will ne neglect most of the buffs but uh, banana sandwiches works really great uh, what it does is it, give, it gives you a physical resistance to 10% so any melee attack from CMOG for example will this will help you a lot uh, or Balrog or whatever. I don't think you need consumable in hard dungeons, but CMOC will do a lot of physical attacks. So banana sandwiches is really great. 10% uh, physical resistance and you get 250 uh, health additionally to your max health. This is a really good uh, item. You don't really use much of these banana. You do use pine mushrooms, but if you're not planning on crafting for your raid, then flower, pine mushroom and banana is really, really cheap and easy to farm. And you use a different type of uh, dust which doesn't affect your alchemy or anything so these are my recommended items um, when it comes to crafting you do want to go to the red star NPC in Queenstown uh, you can get some um, healing aura over here these are pretty cheap I would have to say the healing aura if you have struggles to heal as a pri with a priest in your party healing aura is great but if you are aiming for the DPS Rooted strength is what you want to go for. It's a bit higher on the price. It's 40 per 
10 so it's about four red star per item i would recommend having at least 20 because you're going to be consuming about five three to five uh, depending on the raid and how, how many times your priest is doing the holy symbol so it's it's not too bad with the uh, with the amount of red stars that you can get because if you do your daily and weekly you are gonna get uh, get your red stars back and you know you don't want to sit on the currency too much and you do want to spend on them unless you are saving for the mounts um for the blue stars i would not recommend too much on the life drain lapentier um because it doesn't really benefit you that much. What benefits you the most is Shockwave as a DPS class or any class in general. Uh, Shockwave costs 100 blue stars and you get 100 for them. So it's one blue star for one usage. Uh, I would recommend buying about 200 to 300, uh, AK three times. Uh, so you spend about 300 blue stars for raids up to, let's say, 20 raids or so you it varies on how much you use uh, i'd say you use about uh 30 ish to 40 ish per raid depending on how long it takes uh since you know it varies from different raids but shockwave is something i would recommend to spend your blue stars on now for the uh last item um that we're gonna cover up if you do not have your um crispy fried chicken to craft you can go to the uh, daily wonders or whatever it's called the uh, shop uh, with your daily items and you want to buy the spicy uh, maple noodles so these items are worth well they're, they're worth 40 rues you don't get that much of these so make it count that you are gonna get the kill um, you do your dailies obviously every every day so Get your ruse, spend it if you know that your raid group is going to be able to clear. You want to bend, you know, help out each other. Uh, you don't always have to buy these. You know, take turns on whoever that uses the noodles uh, because it is quite expensive, and you do want to save up for whatever reasons. For example, meta cells, or um, if you want a mount, for example, then yes, you could save up for those. But you're mainly going to use it for the spicy maple noodles. Um, now that I covered up these items, uh, another thing is if you enter your guild house, you can also purchase these spicy noodles, but they have a stock. So make sure that um, you're not wasting all your maple coins. So if you do need to buy a, uh, a consumable for your party or for your raid, if you're raiding with your guild, for example, then you can purchase from the NPC as well the spicy noodles. But it costs 70 gold. So if you do not want to spend your um, guild coins, then go for the other option. Either craft yourself the crispy fried chicken or buy from the uh, daily uh, NPC. Uh, and vice versa. If you do not want to do either of those, you can purchase with guild, guild coins. But you only have five of these from the guild. Um, another option with your guild coin is the gemstone. You do want to purchase the gemstones so you can have more dust to upgrade your gemstones and that's more important in my opinion uh, rather than spending your guild coins on the uh, foods uh, it's really up to you if you want to get that clear or not or you know get your weekly loot it really depends but this is just you know some guide i guess to help you guys to uh, min max i guess if you want to use your consumables it's not expensive uh, it just takes some time uh, especially with the crafting and gathering it takes some time to get up to that rank 13 for example um, for the tonics but uh, with the whetstones and candles are easy at early on uh, it it takes time a few let's say one hour a day to gather and craft uh, your items because i am doing all the crafting and all the gathering with the other uh, professions so it does take up some time for my uh, daily routine but this is my recommendation. Uh, I did stutter a little bit. I'm getting a little bit fatigued and tired because I've been talking nonstop. Uh, I hope this helped you guys out. Um, if you do have any questions about other items, I'll have to look up on that and then reply a little bit later on on the comment section below. But um, yeah, these are the items that I use on me. And as you can see on my hotbar, I don't have that many. I have Healing Aura, Shockwave, Rooted Strength. 
and then I have two uh, healing items over here or four I healing items over here in case of emergency and then that's about it uh, buff items I don't socket them I don't put them on my hotbar because I feel really scared that I'll consume an extra one because I might misclick or mistap on the keyboard so I would say the only two item yeah uh, that you wanna re-consume is the uh, uh, whetstone or the candle because these uh, effects run out uh, when you die so if you do die uh, you do want to have these two items on your hotbar to just you know reapply them on yourself uh, while special warrior tonics or mage tonic does not uh, run out if you die but yeah thank you very much for watching i know it's another long video it's even longer than the previous one i just want to make sure that you guys are uh well informed with the uh, with the consumables that i've used uh, hopefully this will help you guys with the raids to dish out even more damage uh good luck with your c dev and cmock runs uh, hopefully you guys can get them down if you have gotten them down congrats and hopefully we can see some more high numbers uh, such as you know higher dps if you are using consumables it's not mandatory but if your raid is asking for it go for it for that extra mile get that extra you know ep of having higher damage uh, for me i would recommend to not use any if you know you can do it without any consumable then it's better for you because you don't waste any missiles or ingredients so that's my point of view but yeah Thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.